the lateral hip, the gluteus minimus, the gluteus medius, and the iliotibial band, and the greater trochanteric bursa are the main structures we're going to identify. Understand that the gluteus minimus inserts at the anterior facet of the greater trochanter. The gluteus medius has two insertions to the greater trochanter, um, slightly different locations. The anterior band of the glute med inserts to the lateral facet, and the posterior band of the glute med inserts to the, the, uh, the superior posterior aspect of the greater trochanter. So in, in addition, we're gonna identify the, the, the peribursal fat layer of the trochanteric bursa as well as the iliotibial band in its relationship to the greater trochanter and the gluteus minimus and medius tendons. To look at these trochanteric insertions of, of the med and minimus, gluteus medius and gluteus minimus tendons, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna start distally or more at the proximal third of the thigh of the femur so we know where we're at, okay? So right here I'm looking at the femur and essentially what's cross section. This muscle here is the vastus lateralis. I'm gonna move superiorly, you're gonna watch the lateralis get smaller and the femur change, start to change shapes. And I'm gonna stop when I get to the area I want. So we see this apex here. Okay, so this little peak here, um, heard it called widow's peak, or I call it the apex. This is essentially home base. So anterior to that is where the gluteus minimus inserts, and lateral and posterior to that is where the medius inserts. So let's, let's, get, more, let's get more specific here. Okay, so here's our peak. I'm moving anteriorly, and we have a nice, insertion of the anterior facet and the med and the minimus tendon. I'm going to I'm going to give you a footprint width estimation of this insertion. So you look at the caliper. This is basically 1.63 uh, centimeters. This is basically your footprint uh, width where the gluteus minimus inserts. See this hyperechoic structure here, this is the gluteus minimus tendon, um, gluteus minimus muscle out here, okay, so we're, this is essentially a myotendon, and we'll follow that, and we're in short axis, okay, so we're, we'll follow each in two planes. Okay, so here, I'm moving back over the top. One structure I wanna also identify is the iliotibial band. The iliotibial band is very thin at this level, this is the iliotibial band, okay? apex of the greater trochanter, I'm gonna move out laterally and identify what I feel is a lateral facet of the anterior band glute med insertion. So remember, remember that description I had, the, the, the anterior band and the posterior band. So lateral facet, essentially I'll caliper this, is here to here, and then this drop off out here would be our posterior superior facet, and we can identify that separately. Okay, so we see this drop off out here. This is the whole, we're covering the whole glute med insertion now. Okay, so we'll separate this for, for the viewers who are novice so we can, we can hear from here. And I'm, I'm estimating, don't, don't take me literally. This is about the lateral facet, and then from here, the second where the X is out, this is our posterior superior facet. So in total, we got about 2.44 centimeters of attachment zone, okay? As I, as I said earlier, the most of your pathologies are gonna happen along the anterior facet of the anterior band glute med insertion, okay? so. This hyperechoic structure here is our cross-section view, our short axis view of the anterior band of glute med. And as we move out laterally and posteriorly, this, it gets thinner, okay? This is the uh, posterior band of the glute med, okay? And then over the top, over here, and superficial, this is the iliotibial band. It's a little thinner at this level. and. If you're unsure, just internally and externally rotate the patient, rotate the hip and watch, watch those structures move. See the minimus where the cursor is, it's moving. It's kind of abutting the iliotibial band above it. See it is displacing some of that tissue there. So we can just for reference sake, be able to look at that. And also this is a nice little thing you can do when you're 
sometimes if there's a frank tear or some retraction, you can you can you can see some tendon voiding in this in these pictures. So, and this is again, this is one of those things that's more art than science. There's no there's no universal way of of looking for that. I, I think each clinician is going to have their own style in terms of looking for those things. Now, I, I hit that very quickly. Um, but and just to highlight that point, don't take me literally on on some of those. That's not that's not the be all end all special test of looking for tears. Uh, I'm going to turn it long axis in this picture on the anterior facet of the glute uh, minimus insertion. Okay, so what I have here is a nice picture. This is the glute min insertion in long axis now over the top. See this fiber is here, these longitudinal fibrillar patterns. This is the iliotibial band. It's kind of dropping down as it, as it moves distally. Okay, so minimus. I'm going to sweep. I'm going to keep the distal end fixed. I'm going to sweep the proximal end of the probe, lateral and posterior. And this is no two footprints are the same. No two tears are the same. No two patients are going to have the exact same anatomy. This is... And this picture here, the anterior band of the glute medius, okay? Thicker facet, thicker insertion. Most of your pathology is going to be here. We have our bird's beak appearance of the tendon insertion and long axis. Okay, now I'm going to move it posteriorly. Look at the posterior band of the glute min. It's going to thin out substantially in this view right here is your gluteus minimus attachment, uh, posterior superior band of the gluteus minimus, or posterior superior attachment to the greater trochanter and posterior band of glute min, or med, medius. Um, this hyperechoic layer over the top of it, this is actually the peribursal fat lining of the subgluteal or the greater trochanteric bursa. And what makes this, I'm going to identify where the tendon stops and where the bursa starts. We can follow, and we're going to follow this more proximally, okay? So the, the tendon from the bone, bone up, that's the tendon, and I'm from the superior layer of the tendon. It's probably a little thicker than that, but just to highlight just to highlight the difference. Um, all right, that's a good picture. Okay, so again, I'll do a better job here. We're gonna have tendon, and bursa. Here. So this bright white structure coming over the top is our bursa. This is actually glute max on the top. So I'm getting a slice of the glute max. Okay, and the sub glute max bursa, the trochanteric bursa, is this bright hyperechoic line. And it's hyperechoic because it it's 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 a it, it contains a lot of fat. Fat, fat is hyperechoic, it's fascia. Okay, so peribursal fat. Um, is, is kind of the, the physiologic term we like to use instead of just bursa. Bursa insinuates that it's an enclosed sac, fluid-filled sac, and it's really not. Okay, It can contain a lot of fluid when it's distend, distended and irritated. See this small hyperechoic line here? This is what I would consider a normal anatomic fluid layer separating the bursa from the glute max, um, oftentimes in pathologic cases, um, coinciding with some tendonitis of the of, or tendinosis of the, the gluteus medius or minimus, you'll have some distension, meaning this this thin layer gets a lot wider in diameter um, when it's irritated. So we covered a lot of ground there with our with our with our lateral hip. So I'm. We'll walk it back. I think I want to start again in the short axis just so you guys can follow along once again in 
remember where we started, distally, uh, distally on the thigh, we're at the proximal third. Okay, we have the cross section of the femur in this picture, vastus lateralis. And for you novices, we really want to start in this view and move superiorly. Watch the, watch the structure, watch the, shape, watch the shape change of the femur as we move superiorly. It's going to move to a peak in this view, and I'm going to freeze. So this is the view you want to start with, okay? And then identify what's anterior, what's lateral, and what's posterior. And from there, review, review what I just went over as far as what constitutes the footprints of the medius or the minimus anteriorly and then the medius lateral and posteriorly as well as where the iliotibial band sits. This is the lateral hip exam.